It's 5.19, headed home for a Thursday, and one man from Coventry set to take legal action against the government for its role in his father's death. Jason Evans was just four years old when his father Jonathan died after being infected with HIV through treatment with contaminated blood. More than 2,000 people, mostly haemophiliacs, have died after being infected with HIV and hepatitis C through blood treatments. The victims were infected over 25 years ago in what's been called the worst treatment disaster in the history of of the NHS. You might recall when we were previewing the TV uh, listings yesterday, we mentioned this documentary which aired as a panorama special last night. Trisha Dudu spoke a bit about it as well this morning on BBC Commentary in Warwickshire. But what's emerging now, even 25 years on from this incident, new cases are still being diagnosed. Jason, I'm delighted to say, is with us in the studio this afternoon. Hi, Jason. Hi, Phil. Nice to be here. Thanks for coming in uh, on the programme. Uh, watching uh, the the telly last night got a real handle on how big a disaster this is. Obviously, you're here to speak from a personal set of circumstances with your own dad, but uh, did you at any point, when did you discover this was beyond what had happened to your dad and, and happened to so many other people? It's been a very uh, long and slow learning curve for me. Um, but really, it's the last year when we first, the, the Department of Health first put... Uh, a number of documents into the public domain and um, no longer just in possession of the few into the National Archives and I'd spent the last year going through these documents and yet the scandal is unreal and, and uh, when the public really know the real nature of what happened and which is now signs to happen something drastic is going to have to happen. Uh, we'll come to that in a second. Uh, let me just go back and just retrace a little bit tell us a bit about what happened to your dad you were only four at the time so i guess you don't have much of a memory about this do you yeah so so my my dad was born with this condition haemophilia and um, which basically it prevents the blood from clotting properly and for that there's various treatments and originally he was on a much safer treatment as many were called cryoprecipitate and in the late 70s early 80s these new factor concentrates which were a for-profit pharmaceutical made medicine as opposed to a goodwill blood donation and it, it turned out the infection rate for hepatitis c with these products was 100 percent due to the fact they were pooling the donations of up to 60,000 people you were guaranteed to have uh, at least a few infections in there um and and so it was inevitable really and so my dad was infected with hepatitis c and hiv okay but that's not the last of it is it because actually uh, you're saying you've only recently discovered that uh, your dad actually raised concerns with doctors about this, but was told, don't worry about it, nothing to worry about. Yes, and, and it's it's really that key period. And, you know, I said to you before the show, Phil, I've got this document here, mm. which, which really pertains to this point, and this has never been reported on before. This is a Department of Health document, internal memo, and... MP Diana Johnson asked the Minister of Health for this document last month and the answer that came back was that it had been destroyed. Alas, I have found it. Here it is. It's not destroyed, clearly. And it's marked confidential, but it is in the public domain. And I can see why it might do the Department of Health a favour if it Quickly, had been destroyed. Before you read it, how have you come about it? It was buried in the National Archive. Wow. So you've had to dig in there... Find it yourself. Amongst thousands of other documents. Um, carry, on. carry on, please. This document says, and this is why it's key, we dispute a lot of the facts with the Department of Health, but this is their own words in this document. It says, in April 1984, the isolation of the AIDS virus was reported and the virus was acknowledged as the infectious agent which would be transmitted by blood product products. So in other words, in April 1984, they knew these products carried AIDS in them. It then says... We have no record of any public utterance from the government which acknowledged the infectivity of Factor 8 until the 20th of December 1984. It says again on, on the next page, however, they say the reason for this almost year-long delay mm. of when they say, in their own words, they had conclusive evidence of AIDS in these products. They say, because by then public interest had waned and not until December 1984 did a departmental press release refer to the AIDS virus in Factor 8. Now, what's key is it's in that window of delay when they're saying they had conclusive evidence to when they actually told people 
that my father tested positive for HIV. So you're saying they knew about this, right? It's in their own document. There it is, okay, in black and white. Despite that, we've only, uh, I think, was it a couple of years ago, David Cameron did give a public apology, didn't he, uh, to uh, victims. But uh, the current government have resisted calls for another inquiry. You've got to think, with that now, it opens it all up again, doesn't it? It's unreal. I mean, up and, up until this point, the government, the departmental line, is that nothing could have been done quicker. We've been told that. Nothing could have been done differently, and they did everything they could. I think any rational person hearing that would uh, probably disagree. What's, um, what's going to happen next with this, uh, Jason? You've clearly got some, well, uh, quite damaging evidence there for the Department of Health. It's certainly... Um, something that is going to be incendiary in this in this uh, in this case. Have you taken legal advice? Have you got an idea of what you're going to do with this documentation now? Yes, I mean that document there is one of many damning pieces of evidence, but that one there is is brand new and hasn't been reported on before. Um, but yes, I have instructed now a legal firm to take legal action against the government, against the Department of Health on grounds of negligence and breach of their statutory duty because ultimately what we need to do as a community, the thing that has held the victims and the families back on this is we've never gotten to the truth for a variety of reasons, for allegedly destroyed documents, actually destroyed documents, including former health ministers. It's mm. This scale, as Andy Burnham says, the scale of the cover-up is on an industrial scale. It's unreal. Uh, this is Andy Burnham, of course, in the documentary last night, uh, which I mentioned, NHS uh, contaminated blood, uh, the NHS's uh, biggest disaster. If you've not seen it, it's on the BBC iPlayer again. Uh, Jason, a lot of people would have given up this uh, a long time ago. It's a 25-year-old case. You're obviously very close to it because of what happened to your dad. Um, what What is it that drives you that, to keep digging around in government archives, in papers like that, to find these bits of evidence to to get to the bottom of this? It is. It's very personal for me. You know, I feel, and the other children of victims that I've spoken to feel that ultimately the deaths of our fathers um, are, are recorded in history as a lie and the government narrative we allege is false and um, I think one, you know, one of the big things that drives me is I speak to and I'm good friends with many of the surviving victims and I see the, some of the appalling conditions they're living in with very paltry financial support, which, by the way, none of that is on offer to uh, people in my situation or the other children, zero. Um, not that it's about money. It's about the truth. And I, I look at those surviving victims and I, I can only see, you know, if my dad uh, was still here, that, that he could be in their situation. And, 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 you know, reading that piece of evidence that I just did, had the Department of Health not made that decision, there's every possibility he would still be alive today. Best of luck with it, Jason. Let us know how it goes, OK? And uh, we'll stay in touch. Jason Evans from Earlsdon in Coventry. His dad died when he was four after being in given infective drugs. Like I say, part of that uh, Panorama programme that aired last night. BBC. BBC Coventry and Warwickshire. 